Hey, welcome everyone to today's presentation. My name is Ned. I am a technical evangelist at Caspio, and I will be doing the demo for you today. The way I've set up my presentation is in two different phases. In phase one, we'll take a look at some live examples of applications so that you can see what they look like when they're deployed. And then in phase two, we'll log into Caspio, and then I'll show you how people go about developing these applications. For my first example, before I log in as my sample user, I just want to preface and say that all the sample data that you're about to see is fictitious data. There's no PII. I'm going to go ahead and log in, but before I do, I want to mention here that what you're seeing is a Caspio developed login screen and seamlessly embedded in this part of my website. We'll talk about deployment a little bit later today, but for now, let me log in as my sample user. And once logged in, you're going to be able to see a few more additional Caspio data pages or interfaces, starting with the filtering form at the very top. So what you're seeing is a Caspio form that allows us to filter our data. We're able to see six different charts, a combination of pie chart, area charts, bar charts, line charts. And what's really great about the Caspio charts is you can click inside a legend to show and hide elements if you want to hone in on specific KPIs. Directly underneath the charts, we have a pivot table that was developed in Caspio. And here we can see fields on the left-hand side. We can see fields across the top. And we have all of our data in aggregate where we do our calculations. We can also click inside each cell if we wanted to expand the sales for that sales rep and review additional sales data. I can revert back and go back to my pivot table. Underneath the dashboard, we have customers. So here's a Caspio developed tabular report that shows me data in rows and columns. I can add a new customer if needed. I can go into details of a customer. And from here, I can edit the customer's details. I can add a new log. Very typical where we can submit either a phone conversation or an email conversation. We can add a new deal if we close the new sale so that we can track all of our sales data. Underneath that, we have reports, which shows me a combination chart where we can see total sales and also total deals by sales rep. And perhaps there's a correlation there. Maybe we can see based on a number of deals, we can see how the sales tracks up or down. Directly underneath that, we have a list of all of our sales reps. So we have total sales, which I'm sorting from highest to lowest so that we can track our top performers. We have total deals, average sale, and total logs. Now, granted, I don't have a lot of data inside this application, but just try to imagine that five being a combination of phone logs and email logs that Zane has made inside his or her account. One thing that I want to mention, which is hugely beneficial with Caspio, is that we give you unlimited application users. Right now, I'm logged in as Corey, but imagine if your organization had 10,000 employees, 100,000 employees. They can all be logged in simultaneously inside the sales CRM application, not only to view their own data using record level security, but also be able to edit the data if they have different sets of permissions. And finally, we have a profile where Corey can update his or her information. For my second example that I wanted to show you today is a healthcare example. Uh, we have a lot of healthcare organizations using Caspio to leverage our HIPAA compliant interfaces. And one thing that I'm going to show you here is when I log in as the patient, we have the ability to self-register as a patient. So here's a Caspio developed submission form. Uh, what's nice about this form, you can see we have multiple columns, we have headings, and all of our data pages or all of our interfaces that you develop, if it's a report, if it's a chart, if it's a submission form, they're fully responsive. Let's go back to the homepage and now let's log in as the patient who happens to be John Doe. That is my sample user for this use case. And once I log in as John, I'm going to be able to see a, a dashboard where I can see my average blood pressure reading and all of the other vital signs. I can see my profile. I can edit my profile if needed. I can go to my messages. So let's say my primary care physician sent me a message. I can retrieve that message from here. I can view all of my appointments. I can view all of my prior visits. Notice that I'm once again using a combination chart. So maybe there's a connection there. If the weight goes up, the blood pressure readings are going to go up. Uh, on the flip side, if the weight goes down, then the blood pressure readings could go down as well. I'm using an area chart to show all of my other vital signs. I have a very simple tabular report underneath that shows me all the averages across all of my visits. And last but not least, I have test results where I can now, as a patient, I can download maybe my lab work. Maybe I can see the findings on my ultrasound. And once I review those findings, maybe I can take those to a specialist and figure out what I need to do next. 
Now, oftentimes I get asked this question, Ned, how long did it take you to develop something like that in Caspio? And believe it or not, this whole entire healthcare example took about two or three days. And that's given my extensive knowledge with the Caspio platform. However, once you get the hang of how to use the platform, you're going to be able to develop these interfaces yourself very quickly in just a couple of days as well. And you can go live with that application. Now let's log into Caspio and let me show you how some of these interfaces are developed. So I will log into my account. And before I log in, you'll notice that we give our customers the ability to log into multiple accounts, all using a single federated ID. Uh, what's nice about having multiple accounts is that you can have one account for all of your prototypes, proof of concepts, and then you can have a completely separate account for all of your applications that are in production or live. So I will log into one of my accounts. And once I log in, I'm taken to the home screen. And here I can see all the applications that I have developed as long as I have had my Caspio account. In Caspio, it's very easy to begin developing a new application. You can click on this button, create app. And from there, you can either import data from Excel or access database, or you can begin from a blank template. Now I'm going to open up one of my existing applications. So let's open up that healthcare patient portal that we reviewed just a minute ago. And once you open up any application in Caspio, the first place where you always want to begin developing your apps is going to be the tables object. Tables are the foundation of any app that you develop in Caspio. That's where all of your data is going to reside. And because Caspio is built like a traditional database environment, you want to develop all of your tables first. So if I look at my patients table, for example, and I click on design, here I'm going to be able to see all the fields that I'm tracking for my patients table. And if I wanted to change the data type for one of my fields, I can click on data type and you're going to be able to see a slew of options on how we can change that field to a different data type, depending on what kind of data we want to capture inside that field. So if you're capturing long text, you might opt out for text 64,000. If you need to be able to track a date and time, you might select date and time data type. It just depends on what kind of data you're tracking. And those are the type of fields that you're going to eventually add to your table. Now, one of the more powerful features in Caspio is called triggered actions. Triggered actions allow us to automate business procedures in the back end to automate workflows. But as far as actions, you can see we use a Blockly framework to accomplish that. You can snap these widgets in place, kind of like Lego pieces. And the way they're going to execute is top to bottom. Once the first trigger fires, the second one will execute the third. And once they're stacked correctly, that's how they're going to execute top to bottom. Another example here is, for example, I can insert data inside one table, and at the same time, I can insert data inside a completely different table. Typically used if you're doing a history log table for audit trail, that's just another example of how you can leverage the triggered actions in Caspio. Very powerful to automate many different types of workflows in the back end. One more thing to mention on the table side, once you have developed all of your tables, you can click on relationships, and here you're going to be able to see the schema and how all of your tables are linking back and forth uh, using either one-to-one -one relationship, one-to-many, or many-to-many. -many. So for those of you who do have an extensive database background, this is going to look very familiar to you because Caspio works just like a traditional database where you can connect tables using primary keys and foreign keys. You can move tables however you want. In terms of your own preference, you can expand these tables and collapse these tables. Once you have defined all of your relationships, the next step is to move on to data pages. Data pages are Caspio's secret sauce. This is how we're able to build our applications 20 times faster than using traditional methods. And to build your data page, you just need to click on create a data page here, and this is going to launch Caspio's point and click data page wizard. Essentially, your applications, all they are are a collection of data pages because a data page can be a submission form, a data page can be an update form, password recovery, which is very helpful if your end user forgets their password. They don't have to contact you. They can just send an email to themselves automatically and reset their own password at any time. We can build different reports. We looked at a tabular report just a few minutes ago. We also looked at a pivot table. We can build calendars. If you're building event management systems or appointment tracking, you can, you can plot all of your appointments on a calendar layout. We can build different charts for KPIs and analytics and metrics. And you can see how many different charts and options we provide for customers to be able to visualize their data. 
And if you're a little bit more tech savvy, you can build HTML data pages, which is very powerful in Caspio. Even if you're a experienced business user or citizen developer, and you have some knowledge of industry standard languages such as HTML, CSS, JavaScript, SQL, you can add these industry standard languages inside the data page framework to create even more comprehensive and robust solutions. So you're not limited, your imagination is not limited to just the standard features in Caspio. You can expand upon that through extensive coding if you'd like, if you do have that knowledge. Now, I'm not going to build a form from scratch. I'm going to show you one of my existing forms. So let me cancel out of that, open up my folder, and let's take a look at the patient registration form. I'm going to click edit. That's my submission form. If I go back to my website, let's log out. Let's go to patient login, click on new patient. And this is the form we're going to take a look at. Notice how the label says name. Let's see how easily we can change that. Back inside Caspio, I'm going to hit next. The first thing that you always select is your table. In other words, you want to link that table to your web interface. So if the new patient signs up on the web, I want that data to go to my patient's table. You can apply a different style. This is for the aesthetics, the look and feel of your form. You can fully configure your own style inside this object. If you wanted to change the color of the labels, color of the fields, buttons, etc. You can also change the localization for regional settings where you can change the date format or currency or language. Then you're going to choose what fields you want to have on the form. You're going to hit next again. And once you reach this screen for properties, you can see your fields on the left hand side and you can make changes using the form element on the drop down. If you want that to be a radio button, if you want that to be a drop down. For this field name, I have it set up as a text field. That's why on the front end, you can see a text field. If you wanted to change the label to something else, let's say from name to maybe full name, just type that in. Once I click finish and save my changes on the front end, as soon as I refresh the website, I'll be able to see that take effect. And it's really that easy to modify something in the back end and make that a change available on the front end. Now, the way you make this form available on the front end is by simply clicking on deploy, enabling deployment status, and then grabbing one of the deployment methods that Caspio provides. The embed model, all you need to do is copy the snippet of code. Paste that code into your website, and you should be able to see that form seamlessly embed inside your web pages. Caspio is compatible with just about any website builder today. If you're using WordPress, Weebly, Yola, Squarespace, you should be able to easily and seamlessly embed these forms into those frameworks. Once you're done, you can hit close. So eventually what you're going to end up doing is once you create all of these data pages, these interfaces, you're going to hit deploy for each one of them. And you're going to copy and paste that embed code into your website. And that's what allows us to go back and forth between these interfaces, these data pages. For example, you can see I have my calendar. I have my messages report on the front end. Once I log in once again as the patient, all I'm doing here on the front end is tabbing back and forth between my data pages. So here's a Caspio data page. Here's a Caspio data page. Prior visits is also a Caspio data page, as you can see. And test results is also a Caspio data page. Inside Caspio, you're going to be able to see the report that I created for test results. If I hit edit, just so that you can see, notice how I'm not using a submission form this time. I'm using a tabular report so that I can see my data in rows and columns. Once done, you simply click finish to save your changes. I'm going to hit cancel. The final thing that I wanted to mention before I go is under access permissions. Not only does Caspio gives you unlimited application users, we also give you unlimited developer seats. So you're not restricted to how many people can log into Caspio to help you develop these applications. Even if you're in your organization, you have 20 people who want to collaborate on an application, you can add them all here, and then you can also set permissions to what that user can do inside that application. So if I only want to give Alva access to a certain app, I can select that app and I can give her full control to supersede the group's permissions. Thank you for your time. I hope that you enjoyed the demo and hopefully you'll give Caspio a try where you log in and see how quickly you can develop these projects and applications and go live with them. I appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed the demo and have a great day. Bye-bye.